What's up guys and welcome back to the Realistic Room of Wrexham. This is episode number 20 and today we are rounding off season 1 with Wrexham. You would have seen in episode 19 we confirmed our place in the playoffs. We missed out on an automatic promotion spot. We lost to Stockport who went on to win the league and then we beat Barrow but unfortunately we missed out on goal difference to Salford. So Salford, MK Dons and Stockport going off automatically. We look to join them in what could be our final two or three games in charge of Wrexham because I'm pretty confident that if I don't win the playoffs and don't get promoted with this team, I might get fired. It, the, the board are very much <laughs> considering my position. So they wanted the league title. We didn't deliver it to them. Can we deliver promotion? Well, we'll play, we will be playing Walsall, who finished seventh in the league. We beat them 3-0 and 1-0 in the league. So 100% record against them. Having conceded a goal, definitely good omens for sure, but the playoffs are a different animal, that is for sure. So nothing is guaranteed. Um, in terms of the lineup, we stick with the pretty much the same 11 that we've been rocking the whole, you know, last two, three, four episodes. Pretty much a strong 11. But Labour is uh, in, that 11, in that midfield three. Everyone's fit, everyone's firing. I expect us to go on and win this game, win this tie. Well, it would be the Brighton Loney who would have the first chance of the game. And it would come actually in the second half. I'll be honest, the first half was very dead. Not many chances at all. You could tell that both teams were sort of feeling each other out. Didn't want to give away too much in this first leg. But Labour um, missing a really good opportunity dragging his shot wide and then Paul Mullin the guy who has been on absolute flames this whole season but especially the back end of the season coming off the uh, golden boot title and the player of the season title as well he has a shot that crashes off the bar and then he was actually guilty of um, wrong, the wrong, uh, picking the wrong option um, the ball got through played through to him in the box he decided to chest it down and I went for the shot and as soon as I decided to go for the shot I knew it was the wrong decision because I think I had Lee and someone else in the box, I should have squared it to them, didn't, the shot went well wide, and we come away from Walsall with a nil-nil draw. Not the worst result, but uh, we definitely could have won that game in the second half. The first half was very quiet, but the second half we had a couple of chances to uh, to get the go-ahead goal. We didn't, so we'll take it back to the race course and see if we can uh, get the job done there. In the other um, semi-final Forest Green Rovers beat Bradford 2-1 in the first leg so they will be the favourites to uh, get to the final and try and secure their promotion back to League 1 well heading into game 2 of the episode the second leg of our playoff semi-final back at the race course what can we do it's a beautiful sunny afternoon here in the summertime this could be my final game of the series. I really hope it's not, um, but it could be. The pressure is on. I back these boys to win, though. We haven't conceded a goal to Walsall in this save. Three games, four goals scored, zero conceded. Can we try and do something here and secure our place at Wembley, which would be a really, really good, uh, really great way to uh, round off the first season well. Perfect. Talk about perfect starts. Four minutes in and well, he didn't score in the last game. He bags in this one. Four minutes in. Paul Mullen telling the crowd, calma, calma, we got this. Beautiful play from kickoff. We work the ball well down the right. Belaber finds Paul Mullen and the league's top scorer finesses it into the top corner via the post. Beautiful finish. And that is the perfect start. The perfect way to calm the nerves. Now we can go on and try and uh, see this game through. Try and grab another goal or two. The emphasis will be on Walsall. To, uh, to push on and grab a goal. Well, it would be the hosts that continue to dominate this one. And uh, after a corner gets cleared out, that it eventually finds Belabor and the uh, midfielder has a curling effort, which looking at the replay here, it, this save is actually incredible because um, Evans, the goalkeeper, his vision is completely blocked by about three players. So the fact he saves this is quite impressive. Uh, he tips it round for a corner and from the resulting corner, we're so deadly from set pieces, man. From corners especially, we are so, so deadly. And Mendy grabs another assist as he whips in a ball. And who else? Paul Mullin grabs his second and our second goal of the half. Well, just after the half an hour mark with Walsall's first attack of the game, Hutchinson would half the deficit. Not one that Lainton's going to want to see back. How many times have we said that this season? Cross comes in 
and uh, Hutchinson gets a header. It's it it's not it's not great. The replays I can't really justify the header straight at Layton, and it just sort of bounces off the keeper and into the net. And all of a sudden, the visitors are back in this tie, deficit halved, and this has been a very entertaining and open first period, unlike the first, uh, unless unlike the first leg. Well, the goals would continue to fly. Elliot Lee restoring our two-goal lead. Bolton into Mullen into Lee and another beautiful finish near post. Keeper got a hand to it. Maybe he could have done better, but it goes into the back of net regardless. And then on the stroke of half time, Bolton finds Mullen and PM10 is in for the hat trick. And he makes no mistake. Hat trick in the first half, four goals for Exum in the first half. And we go into the break, 4 1 up, and surely heading to Wembley. This isn't over yet, okay? I'm not giving up on this team. The board might be ready to sack me, but I am not giving up. As Layton's called into action in the second half, Walsall looking for any way back into this one. But then we continue to press and look for an another goal. And Mendy, this is one of my favourite assists of the save so far. What a ball. Picks out Paul Mullin, who bags his fourth of the game. And we have a 5-1 lead. And uh, I wasn't too sure when the final would be, if it'd be a few days after or a week after. So uh, being 5-1 up, I wanted to rotate, bring off my key players. So they were rested in case the final was in a few days. Mullin, Lee and a couple others come off. We give some others some game time knowing that we will be heading to Wembley. 5-1 up with 20 minutes to go. It's a lovely sight to see. Well, with 15 minutes to go, Stephen Davis, one of those subs, would find Ryan Morris, another one of the subs. And the Youth Academy graduate would grab another goal. He's been decent this season, Ryan Morris, since being promoted from the Youth Academy. Finding the net of quite a few times. Uh, playing in a few different positions as well. Sometimes out wide, sometimes in the camp spot. He has been effective off the bench there. There's no doubt about that. And then Stephen Davis would hit the bar in injury time. And that would be the final play. Well, the first game might have been tight, tense, and uh, a little bit dull. I'll be honest, this tie, this leg, was anything but those. We win it 6-1. What a game. What a, what, what a way to round off our season at the race course. Obviously, the final was at Wembley, a neutral ground. So this was our last game at the race course. And we gave the fans something to cheer about. A 6-1 demolition of Walsall. And we are heading to Wembley. I'm excited. I'm very, very excited. I'm excited to see who we'll be playing, whether it will be Forest Green or Bradford. But whoever it is, I back our chances, you know. We are a strong side and I think we can do it. And looking at it there, it will be Forest Green. They won both ties, 2-1 in the first leg, 2-0 in the second leg. And we will face Forest Green Rovers on the 9th of June at Wembley. What an occasion it's going to be. I'm sure thousands of Welsh fans will be travelling down to England's capital to try and cheer on their team. And we did have a week break actually until the final. So resting the players wasn't essential, but I'm glad I did it anyway, just to avoid injury. As we head into the final game of the episode, final game of this season, drop a like on the video right now if you think I'm going to win this game. I want to know. I want to know if you think we're going to win this one. Paul Mullin, four goals down that in that last game. What a man he is. Can he fire us into League One? Forest Green, obviously relegated last season, looking to bounce back immediately. Um, we beat them 2-0 and 4-3 in the regular season as well. A couple of really good games with Forest Green, actually, but we beat them both times just like uh, Walsall. So definitely good omens for sure. And 14 minutes in, we would get the perfect start. Paul Mullin. Oh, my word. Well, uh, I had some um, we had some comments um, over the last couple of episodes about Paul Mullin and his uh, his future with the club. I was saying that if we didn't promote promote this season, um, if I was, didn't get fired, I would probably have to sell him for the realism. A lot of comments were saying that because of Wrexham's pull and the the project they're growing there, I shouldn't sell Mullin or any players unless it's a Premier League team or a top Championship team because they are attracting top players. Um, when they're in the fourth tier and the fifth tier. So a lot of people saying I should be wary of the um, offers I'm accepting and not just accept like a League One offer or something. So I'm going to bear that in mind. Hopefully we do get promoted. But just in case we don't, I will bear that in mind. Obviously, William Boyle heading to Norwich, which I think that's a fair and a realistic transfer. Um, I'm sure you guys would agree as well. But I appreciate those comments as well. Thank you for that massively. So I always take your advice on board. So if anyone else has any, any tips or... Um, 
or things they things they want to add to it, add to the series, or give me some advice, feel free to drop a comment in uh, in the comments below this video. Anyway, heading back into the game and. Well, after uh, Forest Green would look to push for an equaliser, we were looking to make it 2-0. Luke Bolton with a, uh, a really fierce first-time effort, actually, and it wasn't a million miles away. And then just before half-time, James McLean robs the defender, plays in Paul Mullen. What can he do here? Oh, he could have passed it, actually. Went for the shot. You can't blame him. The guy's got five goals in the last game and a half. Saved and tipped out for a corner. And it's those two again on the stroke of half-time as PM10 says Kalma. Calma, this is my house. Mendy to Mullin, you know the drill. In swinging corner from the fullback, Paul Mullin leaps and heads us into a 2 0 lead. And we have one foot in League One. Come on, boys, let's just see this out. There's always a goal in injury time as well, whether it's the first half or the second half. It's just the way the game goes. There are always goals. And Forest Green are looking, well, will be needing a couple of them in the second half if they want to make it through. Well, uh, just before the hot, but just before the hour mark, uh, they would be looking for the equaliser. And Morton, the forward, would fire his side back into this game. 2 1, just like Walsall in the second leg. They half the deficit, and it is nervy times once again. Lainton beaten at the near post, not too happy about that one. But in injury time, Luke Bolton would find Carlos Belaba and with Forrest Green pushing for the equaliser, there were gaps at the back. Not loads. Um, we still had to work it through, but Belaba makes it 3-1. Potentially his last game with Wrexham, obviously on loan from Brighton. Um, he has said that he would like to make the move permanent. I probably won't look to buy him, but I might try and get him on loan again. Let me know in the comments if you think we should try and get Belaba in again. 70 rated midfielder very influential for us actually i really liked him i think he did a good job this year obviously had a three-month injury as well but that would seal the victory and wrexham are heading to league one the pressure was on man honestly the pressure was on i felt the board breathing down my neck this job this game was my job on the line this night these 90 minutes would define whether i think I, if I would get sacked or not. Thankfully, I've stayed with... Uh, thankfully, I've got the board up and... Well, I mean, hopefully they don't fire me. I mean, uh, I hope they don't fire me still. I know I haven't won them the league, which is what they wanted, but I have got promotion in the first season. It was a tough task. It was a really, really tough task. And next season in League, league One is going to be even harder. But hopefully, we can do it. As we see the team going up to... Uh, to get the trophy presented to them, playoff winners. A couple of these players won't be here next season. A few contracts running out, a few players heading out uh, to different clubs. A few of them loanees, Belaba, uh, Matthew, who's obviously who we sold to Man United and got back on loan. He'll be heading back as well. Doak as well, who was a decent player off the bench. But what the future holds, I do not know. But for now, we can enjoy this moment. League two playoff victors. AFC Wrexham. Promotion in the first season. I'll be honest, this was the toughest task I've had so far. I really thought that we were going to not be able to do it, especially in the first half of the season when we were playing five at the back. The fact that the board wanted the title in the first season is crazy, and I hope it doesn't cost me my job. I think it would have if I hadn't won this game. Luckily, we have, and we'll see, uh, we'll see if the board want to keep me on, but... The change of formation midway through the season, going to a 4-3-3. Like I said, I never changed formation um, in the first season of a career, realistic career mode, but I felt like the board's demands were so high that I had to do it, and it worked. You know, Lainton coming in, obviously we had Nkunkwe on loan from Arsenal in the first half of the season. We went to Lainton. Hayden was playing at the back. He became captain with Matthews. Uh, we brought in Barnett back. Um, Ford was the starting right back, but then we, we went with Barnett. Mendy was incredible all season. George Evans, I thought, was brilliant in, CD, in the CDM role. I thought he was absolutely fantastic. And then um, and then the midfield, you know, Elliot Lee was brilliant with his goal contributions. Uh, Davis and Belay were rotating that midfield uh, positions. Uh, Andy Cannon had a little stint in there as well. And then Paul Mullen, the absolute unit up top. James McLean. And uh, Bolton out wide. Really, really good team. Really happy with it. It was a tough task, but one we managed to secure. As we go through the leagues here, 
to see uh, what else happened around the leagues. And uh, yeah, you can see we finished fourth. Stockport, MK Dons and Salford all get promoted. Um, it was Accrington, Stanley and Morecambe that finished bottom, but they obviously don't get relegated because there's no National League in this game. Although that would be really cool. I would love it if they added the National League into uh, into FC uh, into FC in the future. That'd be really, really cool. But yeah, they both finished 15 points adrift. Had a really shocking season, just nine wins between them. That is, uh, yeah, that's pretty worrying. I can't lie. The FA Cup was won by Tottenham. It was a London derby and they thumped neighbours West Ham 4-0 to end their trophy drought. Ange Postacoglu bringing glory to White Hart Lane. And then it was another um, derby, the Manchester derby in the Carabao Cup. Man City uh, beating rivals Man United 3 one in the EFL Trophy Derby beat Bristol Rovers two one. We crashed out of that competition very early on. Uh, got made out of the group stages, but then got knocked out. So we were focusing on the league from very early on in the season. But I don't think that was a bad thing at all. Didn't have the facilities to rotate as well. So we move on from that. The UEFA Super Cup, which uh, was the two winners from last season, Man City beating Seville. In the Champions League final, Bayern Munich beat PSG 2-1 to so Harry Kane, winning his first trophy, uh, his first senior trophy, uh, winning the Champions League with Bayern Munich. What trophy to do it as well? And then Liverpool beating Napoli in the Europa League final, winning 2-0. And then the Europa League, uh, Europa Conference League, Fenerbahce, the Turkish Giants beating Frankfurt 2-1. Hayden comes to us and st- says the squad still isn't happy. I mean, look, lads, we've just won the, we've just won promotion. Give me a break. As we look at the uh, the uh, the stats for League Two, Paul Mullen top scorer, thirty four goals in forty five. He was unstoppable, especially towards the back end of the season. Elliot Lee grabbing a six was it sixteen seventeen goals as well. He was fantastic, and then those two head the assist tables as well. Mullen with sixteen assists, Elliot Lee with ten. He was joint top with a couple other players as well. Um, Mendy also in there as well. Like we said, set pieces we were phenomenal. Corners we. Uh, Got a lot of goals from corners this season. It was really good to uh, see see us benefit from that so much. Hopefully we can build on that next year. In terms of clean sheets, Leighton kept nine. Only played 27 league games. Like we said, Conquo was the starting goaltender at the start of the season. Leighton picking up nine clean sheets though. Um, he had a lot of iffy performances, but a few clean sheets as well. So happy with that. Obviously we might look to change up our goalkeeper situation next season. And then a couple of... Uh, a couple of red cards for us, Fletcher and Boyle. Uh, a couple of red cards there throughout the season. As we go through the team now, Mark Howard retiring in the season. Lainton considering retirement, I think. The Lloyd brothers, I, know, I haven't said that they're brothers, but we're going to go with the brothers, just like the Morris storyline. Bryn and Nathan Lloyd, the goalkeeping brothers, both on loan at the moment. Uh, Lloyd, Bryn Lloyd actually on loan at Forest Green, who we just beat in the playoff final. I'm sure one of those might become my starting goalkeeper next season. James McLean, uh, I think, is considering retirement. Mendy was incredible. Ben Tozer, who is the captain, didn't play for the second half of the season. Ewan O'Connell might get a lot of game time next year with uh, Matthews going. William Boyle, as we know, is joining Norwich. Uh, Aaron Hayden was fantastic, stepped up as captain for the back end of the season and was absolutely brilliant. Jordan Tunnicliffe has joined FC Rapid 1923 when the transfer window opens. Uh, Max Clueworth didn't really play didn't really play maybe someone that I look to play next season who knows Dylan Matthews we brought through the Youth Academy Man United signed and we had him back on loan but he'll be heading to Old Trafford uh, uh, shortly Anthony Ford was my starting right back though but then we went to this man Ryan Barnett who was fantastic once again Luke Young played a good um, backup role to George Evans who I thought was phenomenal in the CDM role all year all season round. Thomas O'Connor didn't get too much game time, mainly cup competitions. Again, he might get some game time next season. Stephen Davis submitted a transfer request. I think he'll be retiring as well, 39 years old, but the veteran was uh, fantastic for us. Had that great scoring streak as well, um, scoring in, I think, for three consecutive episodes and four games straight, I think. Andy Cannon had his little spell in midfield. Jamie Jones didn't really feature. Carlos Belabor was brilliant on loan from Brighton. I might look to bring him in again next season. Elliot Lee was phenomenal, contributing double figures, goals and assists from midfield. He was fantastic. Luke Bolton, bit of a slow start since joining in January from Salford. He does have that special something. And I, I think we, if we work on his striking a bit, his pace is such a lethal weapon. Hopefully he'll be big for us next year. 
Lee Morris, one of the Morris brothers, went out on loan to Port Vale. Hopefully he had a good spell there. We kept his brother with us, but Morris went on uh Lee went on loan. Ben Doak was um, a decent loan option from uh, Liverpool. He was good off the bench. Definitely made an impact in some games. Matthew Miller hardly played. We'll probably look to loan him out uh, next season. Ryan Morris was fantastic. We kept him uh, with the club and he was a fantastic um, option off the bench. Stephen Fletcher retiring at the end of the season. He was great to start off the campaign. I think he scored our first couple of goals, actually. He was brilliant, but hasn't played for the back end of the season. Uh, Liam McAllendon. Uh, will be leaving in the summer as well. Paul Mullen, I mean, I've run out of superlatives for this man. Super Paul Mullen, what a guy he is. He will be leading our line in League One, there's no doubt about that. Ollie Palmer played a bit part. He was never a starting striker. He, we rotated him a lot and I wasn't convinced on him at all. I wouldn't be against selling the former Wimbledon striker. Sam Dalby played a bit of a, a bit of a role off the bench, but didn't really play towards the back end of the season. And then Jake Bickerstaff, He'll be leaving as well. So that, that'll that be it. That rounds off the first season with Wrexham. We finished fourth in League 2. We won the playoffs. We will be heading to League 1. And as we see here, the season performance review from the board. Probably won't come as a surprise to you that we are not entirely satisfied with the team's results this season. We have failed to achieve a number of our objectives, falling short of what we expected to accomplish both on and off the pitch. By this point, I was sweating. I thought, oh my God, they're going to sack me. We were hoping for a clearer commitment as well as better results from you. However, we aren't minded to rush into a decision on your future and we feel you deserve another season to work towards what we are all hoping you can achieve as manager of Wrexham. We would like you to remain in post for next season. Please contact the club secretary if you wish to discuss the contents of this email. Oh, big sigh of relief. That is all I can say. I honestly think if I'd lost that game to Forest Green, this series was done. <laughs> I truly think that. Thank God that we made it through. And uh, it was not new beginnings for us, but it is new beginnings in League One, that is for sure. Well, if you enjoyed this season one finale, drop a like on the video. Make sure you're subbed to the channel if you aren't already. And I'll see you in season two and episode 21 very soon.